welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. Sweeney, clear the hall. Katie, bar the door. Molly, put on another cup of Irish coffee. We gotta get this show on the road. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com where you can check out the written show notes on my blog, check out all our publications, and of course, the new member area might be of interest to some of you. We're getting all the wrinkles uh, taken out of it, but there's always a long way to go on that type of thing. And yes, it's just another bunch of free services. Well, that member thing's not so free. Uh, From the Irish Roots Cafe, to leave your comments and... uh, on the members page, we're setting up a little deal where you can just leave your comments right there for me, and I see them right away and get right to it. Uh, and remember, you can also leave your family search or your song or recitation on my recorder to go on one of our other uh, podcast series. Try it, you'll like it. Among today's topics, Fitz or Fitchy is the family name of the week. Searching for Carol and Guy families, among others. Ireland Park, Canada is the website of the day. Martin Murphy is the man of the hour. Irish Families on the California Trail is the book of the month. And we've got a whole lot more, too. Remember, you can get all three of our free podcasts here. Uh, That's the History of the Irish in America Uh, Irish Families Worldwide, which is the podcast you're hearing right now, and the Irish Song and Recitation Broadcast, which is sort of a chat and sing about uh, uh, Irish songs. You get a little history right along with the singing, so that's sort of an untold bonus. Now let's move on to the notes this week and see what we've got happening around the cafe. See what's keeping me busy. Boy, there's a lot. I haven't had this much in a while. I might as well share it with you here. Uh... Now, that Irish song podcast that we've got on the webpage and also available on iTunes and several other little uh, places around the web, well, we covered Makushla this week on that podcast. Peter uh, sang it. We talked a little bit about uh, Irish songs and noted that there were more than just Irish war and fighting and drinking songs. There's Irish love songs, too. Number two, we've switched servers. Uh, Those of you who do a lot of surfing on the web, we covered our page in the last... uh, month or so could see there were some awful slowdowns every once in a while and uh, we couldn't get the server to take care of it so we decided the best thing was to do was just to switch to somebody newer and better and uh, it's working now it's a lot faster and I haven't seen many slowdowns so three cheers for that one now number three like I said the new Irish Roots Cafe community has launched and we're ironing out the bugs you're well welcome to join in and uh Come on in and set up your profile. Some of the boxes you enter the stuff in is not quite perfect yet. We'll have to make them bigger and give you some more room. But you can get started and uh, uh, work around that interactive portion of the members area before we get too busy. And if you're on a Mac like me, uh, I recommend downloading Firefox to use that Safari when you're surfing on some places. And right now, Safari will sort of work on our page, but it needs to be better, so... Firefox is free. If you download that, I find it works real well uh, on some pages on Google and on Amazon.com where uh, Safari sometimes doesn't work right. So that's just a thought, just a little tip, not just for here, but for all around the web if you have some problems on these sites. And uh, I plan to add the Irish Book of Arms database shortly for the members area. And uh, I also had a thought, you know, if some of you would like to submit a one-time blog, just a comment to get out to 50,000 people or so on anything uh, Irish family related, we just might be able to do that for you. You write the blog and we'll put it up and uh, you'll be a guest blogger, I guess you'd say, all for free and all for fun, of course. And uh, that'd be a lot of fun. Just email it to me or uh, figure out a way to get it to me and we could do that. Let your thoughts be known to... uh, maybe a wider audience than what you have right now. Or if you're just starting out and you want to say something and you don't have a blog set up, we can sure do that for the members. And maybe even for a non-member. We're nice folks. And remember that all the members can leave a message to me directly right in that members area. So don't 
forget to go in there and, and also don't forget to fill out your profile now. Get it started up so we can work out any bugs. And you'll be helping me test things out before we start spreading the word in a big way. Probably a couple more weeks before we smooth things out. Well, let me see number four here at the cafe. I'd like to say thank you to Vicki McLeod of Unicorn Limited. She's going to be handling some of our publications at the Highland Games in the Charlotte <coughs> in the Charlotte area on the 19th and 20th of April. Number five, the National Genealogical Society is going to be holding its conference in Kansas City on the 14th to 17th of May. And we're planning on having a booth there at some point. So contact me or look for us there in the exhibition hall. It, gosh, it's been 20 years. I 20 or, Last time it was in Kansas City, I uh, it spoke at several seminars. I was just a young boy then. Uh, but now they're back in here, so I thought I'd stop by and just see what was going on in the official world of genealogy. Looking for the Irish, of course. Now, number six, now that same weekend here, right? It's going to be a busy town that weekend. Uh, look for us with an exhibit at the Kansas City Literary Festival on the plaza in Kansas City on uh, Saturday, the 17th of May. And there's going to be a surprising uh, strong Irish contingent on hand there. We got a bunch of Irish authors here in Kansas City that are showing up. Last week they had Frank McCourt come in, and that launched off real well. They're even going to have some Irish uh, folks putting on some James Joyce, I think, in the local pub. Might even scare up a few singers. That sounds like a real Irish thing, so remember that, the Kansas City Literary Festival on the 17th of May. And remember, we're also going to be appearing as guest speaker at the Savannah, Georgia 25th Anniversary Genealogy Banquet. And I had the uh, full details on last week's blog, and I put the uh, uh, date, time, and place on uh, our blog today, too. So be sure to check out that blog if you're going to be nearby uh, Savannah, Georgia. And finally, number eight for the day. Uh, thanks to Shoal Books, or Skull Books, S-C-H-U-L-L, and that's Barbara and Jack O'Connell, if the truth be known, and they're of the bookshop in Ballydehob, County Cork, Ireland. They've given us a nice order for several of our books, and we're shipping that out via M-Bags to Ireland. Postage is so expensive that if you're shipping something heavy or a lot of things, uh, that M-Bag shipment is the way to go sort of eases the pain for that freight charge. And uh, be sure to check them out if you're over there by Bally de Hob in County Cork. Be sure to say hi to Barbara and Jack O'Connell. Tell them the Irish Roots Cafe sent you. They get a kick out of that. Well, now it's time we moved on to Let's Just Pick a Book and Go for the Book of the Week. Well, the book of the week, we're going to make it again, The uh, Irish Families on the California Trail. And that's uh, that's because there's a good extract in there on a Murphy. And we've got some people searching for Murphy. And we thought we might at least let a few thousand Murphys know who their ancestor might have been. And this is on Martin Murphy. I'm going to take an extract out of that book and uh, tell you a few things about this Martin Murphy and how he spread. And he might be responsible for a, just a whole boatload of Murphys in Canada and uh America, but Martin Murphy was born in 1807 in County Wexford, Ireland, and he came to Canada as so many people did, and so many of them uh, came on down to the U.S. after that, and he he came to Canada around 1820. His wife was uh, Mary Foley, who was also from Wexford, and uh, several of the children were born in Ireland, and Helen and John and Daniel were born in Canada. Now, they didn't stop in Canada, though. They kept on moving, and in 1840, they uh, came to Missouri, and later they went on to California, and he was accompanied by five sons and four daughters. And John Sullivan, who, came a, who became a wealthy capitalist in San Francisco, was among the group that uh, came with them. And they crossed the mighty Missouri River at Council Bluffs, Iowa, in 1844, and boy, it only took a short eight months to arrive safely. Uh, Martin Murphy settled in Santa Clara County and had a lot of land. And he was centered in Bayview Ranch at San Jose eventually. Now, he was buried in the Santa Clara Cemetery and he was succeeded by his son, Martin. His son, Bernard, was a lawyer and a banker. And he served as mayor uh, for several uh, terms in San Jose by 1878. And the family was noted as a pioneer family, but they were also noted uh, for keeping their Irish ways. 
So they didn't lose uh, they didn't lose their heritage on the trip over, and goodness knows they faced enough hardships to forget about everything but survival. Uh, but the family had said they were numbered nearly a hundred by 1878, and several of them lived a long time. So if you're a Murphy and you got some uh, long-lived folks in the clan, you might be related to these guys. Uh, now the Murphy family also included a branch of the Miller family. And uh, one of the family, Brian Murphy, I think it was Murphy. I guess it could have been a Miller. Uh, my excerpt just says Brian. It says he was scalded to death on the ill-fated steamer, Jenny Lynn. And that's really scalded. Scalded would be if his mom was yelling at him or his dad or somebody was shouting at him for doing something wrong. This isn't scalded. This is scalded to death. And his only son, Martin H., died in Washington in 1872. That would have been... Brian's son, I think, and he was at college. And Brian's widow eventually became Mrs. Dunn after marrying Mr. Dunn. And uh, they resided comfortably in San Jose. So there's some real strong San Jose Irish Murphy heritage. Now, there's more in the book, but I just thought I'd take that to whet your appetite and uh, give all you Murphys out there something to think about. That's the end of the extract from Irish Families on the California Trail. Now let's take a look. What's coming up later this episode today? How many of you know why 38,000 Irish arrived in Toronto in 1847? We'll tell you a little bit about that and talk about the website that tells the story too in just a minute. But now it's time to break, and we're going to have a note from the Irish hotline. You know, I tell everybody you you can call our hotline and leave a message, and I'll play it, and you can get out here and talk. And, uh, gosh, I think last month we were up to 50,000 downloads, so you can talk to quite a few people, get your message out, and if somebody hears something they want to get in contact with you, be sure to let me know, and I'll put you two in contact and relay message, whatever it takes. So here's a message uh, from Jeff Coyle who's looking for Patrick Coyle, who came to Philadelphia in Nor- from who came to Philadelphia to North Carolina. Oh, he came to Philadelphia to North Carolina. He was kept on traveling. Shows you how important it is to put your commas in the right place when studying records. Well, let's listen into today's free broadcast for the full recording. Take it away, Jeff. Hello, there, Mike. My name is Jeff Coyle. I just want to say thank you for all the hard work you've done with the podcast and the research. Um, family name I'm searching is Coyle. I'm trying to trace my roots. Research reveals that Patrick Coyle was born in 1729 in Ulster, Ireland, possibly Cavan County. He came to America in 1746. Uh, he was indentured to William Bronson in Philadelphia, PA, around 1746. He later settled in North Carolina. He married Elizabeth Jean Murray in 1752 in Rowan County, North Carolina. Uh, Elizabeth was indentured to Abigail Petro in Philadelphia and also to William White in Kent County, Maryland. Patrick died in 1797 in Rowan County, North Carolina. Family later migrated to Estill County, Kentucky. Patrick's children, uh, Patrick II, born in 1758, John in 1755, James in 1760, George in 1761, and Williamson in 1763, Thomas 1753, Paulina 1757, and Mary Elizabeth in 1765. Um, if there's any, basically what I need is to try to research exactly where they came from in Ireland. The American research, I pretty much have all done. But if any of, if any of your listeners or yourself can help me with that, that'd be great. Thanks a lot. Well, thanks, Jeff. All you folks out there, be sure to let us know if you can help. And, of course, remember it's the American research that has to locate the county in Ireland for almost all of us. That's where you find the record of where to start research in Ireland in the American records. Well, now what time is it? It's time for us all to move our eyes skyward and ask for help as we move on to this week's member search list. Well, number one, the uh, Pat Shog Library in New York. Your five Irish county books are five new county books just uh, released this month or last month. I can't remember. They have all shipped, so that should help out researchers in your area. 
And Jenny Martin of New Zealand, you're just about setting records here. Your county book, uh, County Clare book is in route. Hope you get it soon. Number three, Arthur, Arthur Harvey of Owen Sound, Canada. Your land grants book has shipped. Number four, new member Nancy Daughtry of Houston, Texas. Welcome to the Irish Roots Cafe. Be sure to drop in and say hi in the uh, members area there. Let me know if you're running into any tro- problems. We're working several things out now. I, I think our webmaster Ruth is just going to be busy all week long. Number five, new member William Hauser of Crescent, Pennsylvania is searching for uh, his Irish roots and says his mother often spoke of Cork and Donegal. She said that that's where her father was from or his parents were from. And it would have been in the 1800s to the 1900s. And I love those dates. Boy, I get some family like that. You only got a couple hundred years to wonder where they came from, what year they came over. Uh, my mother's maiden name was Guy, but she said it was O Guy and that they dropped the O when they got to the United States. My mother's father's name was James. Well, thanks for that note, William. Maybe we'll scare up some help from for you. Uh, number six, new member Kevin Carroll of Glen Carbon, Illinois, is searching for Carol Brannon, Flanagan, Conlon, and McNulty. And he says that uh, James, Michael, and Thomas were born near, near Kiltamaw, County Mayo, and he has no info information on Thomas uh, or on Thomas. And James arrived in America in July 1847 along with another Carroll family. And I wonder if they're related. I would bet they are. And uh, he gives some names of those families. I'll have more information on that family search on the blog so you can read it. And he says that we don't know what happened to the Pat Carroll family, but James settled in Dubuque, Iowa. And, of course, he's interested in all those families I've, I mentioned and the family of uh, Bishop John Patrick Carroll of Helena, Montana, as well. Number seven, William S. Cable of Cleveland, Oklahoma. Welcome as a new member. And uh, I think it. Uh, you, you said you might be having a problem logging in. And I think if you go over to the left-hand column towards the bottom, there'll be two boxes there. You fill in your uh, uh, email and your... Uh, password and that'll get you in i don't think a box comes up and asks you to uh, fill it out you have to go down to the box and and type it all in but be sure to let me know if you have any trouble just click on the contact link on the web page and that'll get a message right to me number eight the last one for the day that's enough william farrington of harahan louisiana welcome as a new member i sent a letter off to you just today And that reminds me to say thanks to all of our members because without you, our books would never have been published and these podcasts would not be possible at all. And uh, we're forming a nice little community here. So thanks to all of you. I know we got a lot of people that listen and uh, those of you that carry the load uh, are are always in the minority, but boy, we sure, everybody owes you a, a debt of thanks for stepping up and helping us. Now, remember, you can also help us, uh, not just by becoming a member, but by leaving a message or a question uh, on our uh, Irish hotline. And that phone number is 816-256-3360. Leave an order or leave your family search or ask a question that I can answer in the next, next podcast. And of course, it would be no help at all if you asked a question that I couldn't answer. Well, with that, we're going to move on to the Irish family name of the week. Well, the name of the week today is Fitch or Fitz or maybe even Fitchy. Uh, this today's family history is on, in honor of member Janeth K. Masteriani of Port Charlotte, Florida. And she's searching county down for Fitchy or Fitchy and Greenfield. And she notes that John Fitchie married Agnes Greenfield in 1822 and came to the U.S. about 1829. And she's searching for his and her parents in Ireland. Well, now that's interesting. And we're going to take, we're going to try to take a little bit of a look there, but we're just going to assume for broadcast purposes that uh, Fitchie came as sort of a nickname from Fitz or Fitch, which may or may not be the 
case, but sometimes you just have to take a guess and do what you can on that day, and that's the case today. Well, now let's move right on to the variant spellings of the name. Well, from the master guide to the various spellings of Irish family names, what do we have here? Well, the name can, can be related to names like Fitch, Patrick, Fitchy, uh, F-I-T-C-H-I-E, and that ending can change from an I-E to a Y or an E-Y, of course. And, of course, it can change to F-I-T-Z-Y, Fitzy. Uh, and you also see names like Fitzgerald or Fitzgerald. Uh, instead of being spelled with an F-I-T-Z as we most often see it, it could be spelled with, a, with an F-I-T-C-H. The same thing goes for Fitzpatrick and all the other Fitz names. You'll even see the abbreviation of a name called Patchy. Well, you change the P to an F to be Fatchy. Yeah, you're getting close to Fitchy. Those are all kinds of little possibilities just to ponder about over a mint julep in the backyard. Well, let's move on and see if we can dig up any clues for that name the way we've outlined it. And for our purposes today, we're going to look at it as a variant spelling of Fitz which is a shortened form of several names, as I noted. Now, the most often way we found it uh, abbreviated that way are in our records for Fitzpatrick, Fitzgerald, and Fitzsimmons. But it can be with any Fitz name, so keep your eye open. And, of course, you have to consider also it has nothing to do at all with Fitz. It comes from a separate uh, separate area, or it came in from outside of Ireland into Ireland, and it has a total... Uh, a different origin. Things to consider there would be, well, what religion was the family when it came over? And what were the first names of the family when they came over? Uh, you just sort of got to put it together like a detective show. Be your own Quincy. Uh, now let's see what we've got. We're going to take a look at the Irish Book of Arms. Well, if we look at the Fitz names, just to give you an idea, idea of the families, those Fitz were a uh, not only numerous families, but they were prominent. We find 27 listings for Fitz names in the Irish Book of Arms. And that wouldn't be just F-I-T-Z or F-I-T-C-H. That's those names like Fitzmorris and Fitzwilliams and Fitzgibbon and Fitzherbert. So that sort of widens the scope a little bit more uh, just to give you an idea of what you might run into when you're expanding a search. Now, if we take a look at the free uh, master index search of Irish names on our webpage, that's free to everybody, we type in the name Fitz, F-I-T-C-H, what do we get? And, of course, Fitchy would just be sort of a nickname off of Fitch, <clears throat> perhaps. Uh, Fitch is in the birth index of Ireland. It's also in the book of Irish families, great and small, but we didn't find very much because it's just given as a variant spelling. Not a history, not much at all. It just says that it exists as a variant spelling. So it's a tip, but you probably wouldn't want to buy the book just to hear that. Uh, you already know it now, don't you? And, of course, we find it in the Families of County Dublin, Ireland book and in the Names of Irish Passengers to Ireland book. And the last one we'll give you from that section is uh, there's a G.K. Fitch, F-I-T-C-H, in Irish Families on the California Trail. And he is given uh, aboard a, sh a ship from New Orleans to Chagre in 1849. And if we move over to the Journal of the American Irish Historical Society, we've got two little references. One to a uh, Adonaha, which sounds like O'Donohue, Fitch, F-I-T-C-H. And uh, also a reference to a Fitch, F-I-T-C-H, Gerald, G-A-R-R-E-L, which of course would be a shortened form of Fitzgerald, I think. And we also find a Fitch Somans, an Edward Fitch Somans. That's F-I-T-C-H-S-O-M-A-N-S. And that, of course, would have probably be a variant spelling of Fitzsimmons. And that's in uh, volume 27 of the Journal of uh, American Irish Historical Society. So if nothing else today, we just sort of shown how far out a name can stretch from Fitz to Fitch to Fitchy. And uh, the kind of decisions you might have to make if you're just beginning your research and aren't familiar with it all. Uh, let's move down quickly now to the website of the week. Well, this is going to be the Ireland Park webpage, and you can click on it on our blog. Uh, it's the uh, IrelandParkFoundation.com. 
and it's sort of interesting. It uh, talks about Ireland Park at Aaron Key, Toronto, and it was opened by the president of Ireland, uh, Mary McAleese, in 2007. And that park honors the Irish immigrants who fled the famine of 1847. And listen to this, 38,000 who arrived in Toronto that summer. And that's when the city's total population was only 20,000. So that doubled the population of of the city almost overnight. Talk about trouble. Talk about immigration problems. Boy, that'd be it. Uh, Ireland Park is set up as a bridge that'll link two nations and two cities. And it's the story of the Irish people overcoming hardship and suffering and uh, also shows us the kindness and generosity of the Canadians who are already there. And they talk about that generosity still being there today. And uh, I think I'd have to agree with that. Uh, So take a look at that if you're interested in Canadian or North American uh, history of the Irish and immigration. There's a lot going on up there in Canada, a lot of good genealogy groups and history groups. So I recommend you checking something like that out. Now let's just move on real quickly here. We're almost out of time. Let's just take uh, four curious news and notes and then we'll be signing off. Number one, did you know there's a new Monopoly game being launched in Ireland? And it's going to be all about Belfast with Belfast names and places. So that might be a good way to learn about your heritage if you learn about all those Belfast uh, names and places. If you ever go to visit, you'd be able to say, well, let me see, I just took a ride on the board. That must be over here. And uh, you'd be recognizing all those storefronts. What a thing that is. Now, what about uh, number two? Monsignor Hannon is a priest from Galway, or was a priest from Galway, who came to Mississippi in 1945. And he also became known as Father Christmas uh, to a whole lot of youngsters in Mississippi. And they say that old, the old Santa himself made toys from wood each year, and he gave them to the needy kids at Christmas. He has just recently passed away at the age of 88, but it sure does sound like he's missed, and uh, he left his mark. And number three, school choice. That's always a, a topic in America lately. But according to recent surveys, the Irish overwhelmingly support the right to pick the type of school they send their children to. And the most favored choice was a publicly funded Catholic school. 47% chose that. The second choice, 37%, was a state-run school in which all religions are taught. And only 11% favored a school in which no religion is taught at all. So for more information, see the uh, uh, irishindependent.ie online. I've got a link on the webpage, I think. Uh, They've got a full story on that, as well as several other people. And the last one for the day, boy, if you're traveling to Ireland, you might be in luck because the weak dollar has forced hotels to slash rates. And they say that in an effort to bring more Americans over because of the dollar falling, Hotels are planning to cut prices in the west of Ireland. Boy, that's where I stay. That sounds good. Uh, The normal five-star room rate of 249 euros is being lowered to $249 just for U.S. tourists. That's a savings of 89 euros. And if the average tourist stays eight days, that would mean a savings of 623 euros. Hmm. Trouble is, well, I used to just pay $20, $25 a night at a B&B. Boy, these people got some money. And it says, although about 10% of the tourists comes from the U.S., uh, the deal is they tend to stay a little bit longer and they spend a little bit more, so they sure uh, they sure want to make sure the Americans keep on coming over, and it's a tradition we don't want to uh, see forgotten either. Now you can see more information on more information on that story in the Irish Independent. I've got a link on the blog, I think. And that'll about do it for today. We're running over time once again. Remember to send your books, music, or family search to me here at the Irish Roots Cafe by email or by mail to our American address, the Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave your message or report on things in your part of the world. On my phone recorder at 816-256-3360 or Skype me at Mick the Bridge. That's M-I-C-K. 
Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. Away.